What's going on everybody? Check it out. We've got some cool pieces here in front of us and I've got an unboxing that I'm going to do. And in this video, what I want to talk about is the collecting side of silver stacking. So if you've been stacking silver or gold for quite some time now, maybe you're getting bored with what you're stacking. You're tired of looking at the junk. You're tired of looking at that American Eagle. Maybe you're tired of looking at that Canadian Maple Leaf. Well, in this video, we're going to take a look at some of the pieces that I consider to be collector's pieces and the collecting side of silver stacking. And so saddle up, boys and girls. Let's do this thing. All righty. So while we open this up, I will tell you I got this off of Instagram. I know, right? You can sometimes find some really good deals on Instagram. And this is from stacking.nyc. So check him out over there. But for right now, I'm going to be very careful in opening this up because I know what's in here is a very cool piece. So we've got a little note. Monkey. Love, man, you write like a doctor, Tommy. Love the love. I guess that's what it says. Love the love. Th congrats on 8,000. Let's keep it going. Thank you, Tommy. Appreciate that. We've got one piece here that was in the bag. Don't know what that is because if I remember correctly, I had only ordered one piece from Tommy. So I'm curious to know what that is. And I'll, I'll tell you, he did wrap this up pretty good. So this might take me a hot minute get into it. I want to be very careful with this because this is a piece I've been looking at for some time. But uh, like most premium pieces, like most collectible pieces, the premiums are a little high. The premiums are up there for an ounce of silver and some people, myself included in that, just aren't really keen on spending that kind of money. But we can take a look here at this proof PCGS graded. Let's take a look at the flip side. Wow, PR70 Deep Cameo 50th Anniversary Planet of the Apes. This coin is amazing. But like I said, guys, this is a collector's piece in my eyes. So let's go ahead and open up the rest of this because it's supposed to come with, you know, the whole display bag or display box, the COA and all that. So that's probably what we got in here as we carefully open this up. There we are, the 50 year Planet of the Apes movie. I'm a huge fan of this movie, mostly because it involves some time travel and I am a nerd for time travel. So we'll take a look here <clears throat> at all the goodies that go along with it. You've got the Turn of Authenticity one ounce silver proof coin with some fun facts. If you wanna read it, go ahead and pause the screen right here, but I'm not gonna bore you with all that. We'll take a look at the specs. This is coin number 1293 out of a maximum mintage of 5,000. So very cool there. You open up the box and you've got yourself the original display holder that came with it. So the coin was originally inside of this case here and you put this on your desk or whatever but they got it graded pr70 deep cameo wow let's let's get up close and personal like we like to do with our coins here you can see the extreme detail in that gorilla's face that ape's face you can see in the background in the distance here there's a whole there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in this coin wow and for a colorized coin you guys might know i'm not a huge fan of colorized coins but this is very cool. So let me get this closed back up in the box here. Actually, I put this in the wrong way. We'll put this guy right back in the box. There we go. I think that's how it goes. Nope, it goes like this. All right. So we got that lid back on. I'm gonna get this box here out of the way just for a quick second because I wanna talk about the collecting side of silver stacking. So if you are Maybe you've been stacking silver for years and years. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, what is in here? I wonder if this is a, a little a little something extra because I don't remember ordering anything extra from them. I might have. Maybe I did. I don't know. What is in here? What is in here? <clears throat> All right. In this one, we've got... Wow. A year of the monkey with the privy lion mark. Did I order this from him? I don't remember if I did or not. I buy so much stuff these days, I don't even know what I ordered. So 
Uh, the Privy Mark, these uh, Perth Mint Lunar Series coins, they come out the Privy Mark. The, the mintage on those is around 50,000 as opposed to the regular non privy uh, lunar coins. Uh, they usually have a mintage of about 300,000. So in this instance, this would be considered a lower mintage, not low, but lower mintage, and would still fall in line with what I consider to be a quote unquote collectible coin, right? So in my eyes, a collectible coin are things like what you see laid out before you. We've got a limited run Spider. Man, this is the first edition in the Marvel series from the Perth Mint. You've got your Homer Simpson coin, another new release here, limited limited mintage. Uh, but all of these coins come with a pretty hefty premium, right? Now, I'm curious to know from you guys down in the comments below, what do you consider to be a collectible silver coin as opposed to like a bullion coin or generic silver or anything like that? What do you consider to be a quote unquote collectible coin? In my eyes, you know, you got something like this. This was a very limited run because of the lawsuit. Britannia Rules the Wave was printed on this coin when Britannia and that, that whole Britannia aspect of coins, I guess you could say, is trademark. You can't do it. These guys did it, and I believe there's maybe 7,000 of these in existence, something like that. Not quite sure of the mintage. If you know it, comment down below. Uh, help me out a little bit. But coins like this... Pretty hefty premium, not so much when you get them right away. If you get them right out of the gate, the premiums aren't too, too bad. Uh, coins like this, premiums are through the roof. It's a one ounce silver piece, but because it was recovered at the World Trade Center, the 9-11 attacks, the premiums on this one particular silver coin, maybe you're looking at $100 over spot. Easy, easy. So if you're new to stacking silver, maybe you wanna stay away from coins like this. Maybe you want to stay away, you know, from even generic pieces like this. This here is a is a piece that I often have on my live show, which I do every single Wednesday at seven o'clock. I auction these off from time to time. These are generic. They're uh, MPM bars. You can see on the back here. Let's get this up close. You can zoom in on that. MPM and uh, one troy ounce. It's a one troy ounce bar, it's a chunky bar, but I challenge you to find this on eBay right now. You just can't find these. They don't come on the market often, and when they do, the premiums are through the roof. I mean, you'll pay 60, sometimes $70 for something just like this. And yeah, that's a generic piece of silver, but because of the uniqueness of it, it becomes a collector's piece. In my eyes, it, comes, it becomes a collector's piece. So why do I have all the junk silver out here? Maybe maybe you're you're a junk silver person and that's all you stack because 90% silver is where it's at, right? It's very liquid, it's hard to counterfeit, everybody recognizes it, it's super easy to get your hands on. I don't consider this to be collectible silver. I have this out here because this is the opposite of the spectrum in my eyes. If you're into collecting silver, if you're into collecting silver, you're probably not buying junk silver like this. This is more so for what I consider to be the investor, right? If you're solely stacking silver and gold with the intention of retiring, cashing all this out when you're old, you know, going and sailing away to wherever, Indonesia, um, you're probably gonna be stacking up the generic stuff, not the MPMs. You're not gonna stack anything like that. You're gonna go with more uh, private mint silver town, private mint, pro private metals. You know, I shouldn't even say that because private metals prices are actually getting up there. So if you're not into collecting silver and you're just into investing in silver, the name of the game is buying silver as cheap as possible. You shouldn't care what it looks like. You shouldn't care if it's as ugly as this dime right here. If it's this ugly, it doesn't matter. It's got silver in it, and it's probably gonna be a little bit cheaper than something like this. Obviously, this is a quarter, but you get what I'm trying to say. If you're into just investing in silver, and your aim is to have as much silver content for as cheap a price as possible, you should pretty much avoid everything you see in cases like this. You should never really be buying uh, deep cameos, PR anything, uh, whether it's a, just a simple coin like this. You really shouldn't be buying silver like this if your aim is to get as cheap as possible. Especially, let's just take a look uh, at this piece here from 9-11. This is the recovered coin from 9-11. Like I said earlier, the premium on this is pretty hefty. This coin right here, as it sits, about 150 to $200, right? About that price. The reason why I say, as an investor, you should avoid stuff like this is because Check this out. This is 10 ounces of generic bullion sealed up in a tube. I'm not gonna open this up, but it's sealed up in here. This is from JM Bullion. They have spot silver prices. You can get 10 ounces of silver for exactly spot 
These 10 ounces of silver are more inexpensive than this one ounce of silver right here. Isn't that crazy? $150, right now silver's at uh, $14.70, say. So if you got the spot deal at JM Bullion, you're gonna get 10 ounces of silver for less than what you would pay for a collectible piece like this. Now, if you're, let's say you've been stacking for years and years and years, and you've got pretty much where you want to be, you're on track for your, your long-term saving goals, and you're, maybe you're starting to get bored with what you're stacking. Maybe you're getting bored of just seeing these tube after tubes come in. You're getting sick of seeing generic stuff and American Eagles and maple leaves, and you're sick of just the boring, tired silver. You want to spruce things up a bit? Believe me, I hear you. So for me, I love movies. I'm a movie nerd. Planet of the Apes, time travel, big nerd for it. You mix that with some silver and you've got me as a buyer. It's just that simple. So when coins like this actually come out in the market and you don't want to necessarily spend the extra money to get like a, an MS-69, which by the way guys, in my personal opinion, it is not really worth it to buy an MS-69 if the premium to an MS-70 is a few dollars. If the premium to an MS-70 is just a few dollars, spring and get the MS-70. In my my head, the way that I look at graded coins like this, especially MS-69s, anything that's not an MS-70, I just consider them to be framed coins, right? I like this coin a lot. I wanted it to be in a framed, protective case. So I've got it as a graded coin. You don't have to do that. If you're solely looking to get cool coins like that, don't spring for the extra money because it's got a slab with it. Just go and pick up the bullion version. Same thing, same coin, comes in a capsule, it's still protected, but the premium between a coin like this and a coin like that, obviously they're different coins, but the same kind of idea, the premiums are gonna be, I would say at least a 20% difference. And that adds up over time. So think about that again. $150 for one ounce of silver or $147, give or take, for 10 ounces of silver if you find the, the spot deal. Even if you didn't find it at the spot deal, your silver's at 14 some odd dollars an ounce, you'll probably pick up a generic ounce of silver for $17, $18. And do the math, add it up, how many ounces of generic silver at $18 an ounce can you pick up for $150? Quite a bit. And at the end of the day, boys and girls, when you melt this stuff down, I don't care if you're melting down Britannia Rules the Wave, the uh, the little AP here on the coin, or even the 90% silver. When you melt this stuff down, it all looks the same. Silver is silver is silver. So it doesn't matter what it looks like right now. The reason why we invest, the reason why we buy silver is for the silver content. So at the end of the day, an ounce of silver is an ounce of silver is an ounce of silver is an ounce of silver. The junk silver, a little bit different because this stuff is 90% silver, 10% copper. So you have to melt this down and refine it a little bit. Nobody's really melting this stuff down unless you're one of those backyard pourers. Maybe you're pouring this stuff, you know, making cool little pieces or whatever, and that's totally fine too. So I throw the question out to you guys. How do you feel about collectible silver or gold? Are you into that? Do you just stack the generic stuff here? Are you into just the slab stuff? Maybe you don't deal with the 999 fine. Maybe all you deal with is the 90% silver, whether it's American or from the UK or even Mexican generic silver or uh, junk silver. I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what your take is on collecting silver as opposed to investing in silver. And at what point in your investing, uh, let's call it your investing lifetime in silver, at what point did you transition from investing to collecting? At what point did you make that decision to say, you know what? I'm kind of bored with this stuff. I want to look at something like this. I want to start getting into different series you can collect. Uh, you got the Spider-Man, you've got uh, Captain America, you've got Thor, the Black Panther. There's a bunch of different Marvel characters in here. And if you're into Marvel and you're into comic books, it just extra cool. It just gets you extra into it. So I know this was a little bit longer of a video here, but I really wanted to just dive into the different aspects of collecting versus investing. Uh, and I'll say it one more time, just in case you missed it earlier. If your sole purpose is to invest in silver with the intentions of selling it when you're older, to get out of the game, sell it, go buy a house, go buy an island, whatever it is that you want to do, if that's your aim, you really, really, really should not be buying pieces of silver like this. Again, one ounce of silver here, I can get 10 ounces of generic silver for the same price or even cheaper in most instances. That's gonna do it for me in this video, everybody. If you wanna see more videos like this, you wanna have some more conversations like this, put your comments down below and make sure you're subscribed. 
And again, if you don't have that bell icon checked off, well, you're doing yourself a disservice because that's gonna notify you whenever I put out new videos like this one here. But that's gonna do it for me, everybody. Hopefully I'll talk to you again real soon. Peace out, YouTube.